Hi, Chris P. Williams here. I hope you're well. In this quick tutorial, I'm just going to show you a method of sharpening your images without affecting your color. I don't know if you've noticed, but various sharpening methods, such as the sharpening tool within Affinity Photo, and perhaps the options available to you under the Live Filter layer, such as um, Unsharp Mask and High Pass Filter, although often very effective, can introduce various color artifacts, especially with regards to um, contrast and transition of colors. And the reason for this is all of these calculations to sharpen your image are taking place within the sRGB color space. So therefore, the option you've chosen is affecting your color, luminosity, and contrast all in the same place. Now, you're probably wondering, is there a way of sharpening an image without affecting color and without introducing too many artifacts? And yes, there is. And an option that many professionals use is to sharpen within the lab color space, which I'll just show you now. I'm just going to duplicate my background, Control and J, or Command and J on a Mac, and I'll call that Sharp. Just rename the layer. And this is just so that we have a reference to go back to. You don't actually have to do this as part of the process. And we're going to go to Document, and we're going to drop down to Color Format, and we're going to select Lab 16-bit. So switching from RGB to Lab, and immediately you see there's a change in your color. The colors have become richer and more saturated, and that's purely because the Lab color space holds within it a much wider color gamut than the sRGB um, color space. So we're not going to concern ourselves too much about the intricacies of lab color in this tutorial. I will, though, just touch on this channels palette in the bottom right hand corner. And you can see now, instead of having RGB channels, we've got a composite alpha, composite B opponent, composite A opponent, and a composite lightness. And effectively, what's happened here is our image has been broken up into these four channels. The alpha channel stores all of our transparency information, such as mass, etc. The Composite B opponent stores all of our blue and yellow color information. The Composite A opponent stores all of our magenta and green color information. And then on top of that then, finally, we have the Composite Lightness channel, which just stores the luminosity and lightness information for our image. So it's simply a case of going to Layer, making sure our Sharp layer is selected. Go to Layer, New Live Filter Layer, and we go down to Unsharp Mask Filter. Now, radius, we're going to set at one pixel, and the threshold we're going to leave at zero pixels. And then we can just move the factor slider to the right until we've got a level of sharpness that we're happy with. If I zoom in on this image, we can see that although we've sharpened this image quite extensively, we haven't introduced any of the color noise that's typical of using sRGB sharpening methods. And also, we haven't lost any of the transition between colors. For instance, if you look at the greens in the cat's eye here, you can see there's some usable and lovely transitions between the darks and the lights. And maybe if I go onto Billy's nose here, this brown patch on the nose is a good example whereby we've got dark tones of brown merging into light tones of brown, and none of those have been affected. When you use normal sharpening methods, you'll see contrast bands introduced, which is a negative side of using sRGB-based sharpening processes. So you can see you can get away with far more aggressive sharpening within the lab color space. So I'll control in zero to zoom out. And once we're happy with our sharpening, we can close down our dialog box. And we can now return back to the sRGB color space. We'll just go to color format, RGB 16-bit, and bang, we've retained the sharpness. We've obviously seen a reduction in color, switching between the two spaces, but we've not brought along with us any color artifacts. So I'm sure you agree, it's quite an effective way of sharpening, and it is a method used by many, many a professional. And one more thing to notice as well is, it is a global adjustment in as much as affected our entire image. What you might wanna do is highlight your adjustment layer that's the square here, or you can use the drop down just to make sure you've got the right one. And making sure your unsharp mask layer is highlighted, we can now go to our brush tool. And because Affinity Photo automatically applies a mask to every adjustment layer, if we paint black on this image, it will hide any 
sharpening information that we don't want to see and if we paint white it will reveal and at the moment you can see the mask is totally white so it's revealing every bit of information so obviously the sharpness has been applied to Billy's face the blanket the bucket the background which is not really what we want so I'm just gonna click on control and I and you can see that has inverted my mask and now everything is hidden even the sharpening on Billy's face so using my brush tool I can go to my color swatch and select white and the shortcut for switching between the foreground and the background color swatch is X so we now have got a white paintbrush and I'm going to increase my brush size and I'm going to reduce my opacity to around 20% and I can start painting white onto my image just over the areas where I want the sharpening to be introduced which in this case is Billy's face so if I turn that layer off you can see the sharpening effect is retained on Billy's face but is removed from the rest of the image such as the blanket and the edge of this pail here so I'll just paint a little bit more on maybe reduce my brush size and bring in some of the detail on Billy's ears and there you have it it's a very controlled form of sharpening and it's a very professional form of sharpening in as much the colors are totally unaffected and in fact even if I were to repeat this effect by duplicating the sharpness layer by highlighting the layer and pressing Control and J or Command and J on a Mac you can see I've doubled the effect and if I zoom in there's still little or no artifacts introduced as part of that process so you can see this is why it's the preferred method of, of sharpening so hopefully you found that useful and if you did, please like this video and please subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much for watching.